Oh, hello there, my non-American. I know the Premier League has kicked off, and what a goddamn start to the season it's been. But I thought maybe, I don't know, maybe you'd be interested in a league who you didn't know who was going to win the whole thing before the season even started. Ah, uh, yes, the NFL. The most exciting, the most violent, the most watched sports league in the Estados Unidos. A league where just last year, we had a player intro where Jamal Williams said that he was from the hidden village of Naruto. Jared Goff, Cal. First swag, guys, Kage. Leader of the hidden village of the Dean. We had a TD celebration where Devontae Smith mimed putting on a ski mask and then stole gifts from the Salvation Army. And then we had this footage of a player seemingly being serviced by another trainer on the sideline. What a league. And yes, okay, we call it football too. We've been over this, people. It should be called hand egg ball, but in our defense, we Americans are quite stupid. So on that note, let me be your guide. Catch you up on all the juicy storylines and big names and new places, tell you who are the favorites, and of course, give you a few sleepers for all the cool kids in the back. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be primed and ready to bandwagon an American hand egg ball team. Welcome to a clueless non-American's guide to the NFL 2023-2024 edition. But first, like the NFL, I gotta pay some bills. Hey guys, your favorite fat Asian. As you can see, I'm not quite so fat anymore. And the only thing that helped me lose the weight and keep it off was keto, low carb. That's why I love Factor Meal Plans. F cooking, f counting macros, f cleaning up. This September, have Factor, have professional dietitians deal with all that shit for you. Plus, saves you all the time of going to the store, of prepping your meals, cooking, which leaves you more time to sit your ass on the couch every Sunday and watch more football. Just put in your weekly order and Factor will deliver clean, nutritious, never frozen meals directly to your door. And anytime you're hungry, you just pop a few holes in that bitch, microwave it for a couple minutes, and you're eating. And you're eating good and nutritious. And if you want to add a little fancy pants to your life, I suggest Gourmet Plus. Get some surf and turf, or my personal favorite, the truffle filet mignon. Bro, miss me with that Mickey D's from Uber Eats. For less than that, I can eat fucking truffle filet mignon. This is insanity. So if you want to optimize your life, you owe to yourself to try out at least one box of Factor. So head over to factor75.com or use the link on the top of the doobly doo. And if you use code B-50 at checkout, you'll get 50% off your first box. Once again, that is factor75.com and use the code B-50 for 50% off your first box. Thanks again to Factor for sponsoring this video. Now, back to the show. So first off, I'm writing this in August. And you know the spiel. Sports is inherently unpredictable. Even more so than the ball is shaped like this. And the beauty of the NFL is partially in the amount of change that occurs from season to season. There's more turnover in the NFL than any major sports league in America. On average, four new teams will make the playoffs each year that didn't the year previous. So teams that were shit one year can go and be competitive the next. I say this to say that no matter which team you choose to support, there's a better than zero chance that they'll be good one of these days. Now, historically, your chances are better if you don't support the Lions, Browns, or the Jets. But here's the crazy thing, all three are actual trendy dark horses to make the playoffs this year. So unlike your Premier League, it's not a foregone conclusion on who's going to be good or even who's going to win the whole thing. You might actually get a surprise or two. So with that, let's lead off with the biggest storylines of the offseason. And coming in at number one is Aaron Rodgers moving to the Jets. And this is pretty much the closest thing you get to Messi leaving Barcelona. After spending his entire career in Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers has emerged from his ayahuasca retreat decide to trade one green jersey for another. The future Hall of Famer is looking to turn around a Jets franchise that has long been the laughing stock of the NFL. And you can already see that New York is rubbing off on him. Just watch him cuss the fuck out of his teammates on this year's Hard Knocks. Here we go. Fucking mistakes in one damn drive. It's fucking unbelievable. Please. Look at everybody. Should we con concur or what do we do? Fucking what do we say? Three fucking balls and fucking three wrong routes and a fucking false start. Don't be alarmed. That's just how New Yorkers say hello. On a more serious note, he should have better weapons around him than he did the last couple of years in Green Bay. At the age of 39, he's getting up there. People question how much he's got left in the tank. He was missing a couple throws last year. But then all said, we've seen this script before. Peyton Manning and Tom Brady left their longtime teams after everyone said they were washed, only to go on and win another Super Bowl. And Aaron Rodgers is at least as good as Peyton Manning and perhaps a better arm talent than Brady ever was. Still, it's a lot to ask of him to overcome the sinkhole that's been the Jets. But if anyone can do it, it's Aaron fucking Rodgers. Or, it'll be a complete shit show, and Aaron Rodgers will go on Pat McAfee and bitch every week. Either way, this storyline will be front row and center on Broadway all season long. And you know what? I'll be there, no matter what. Then, we have the next generation 
of rookie quarterbacks taking to the big stage. Three QBs were taken in the top four picks of the NFL draft. And how hyped am I about them? Eh! Listen, two years ago, I promise you, five generational quarterbacks were entering the league. And they all kind of sucked. I mean, Trevor and Fields still got potential, but we'll see. The fact is, quarterback is one of the most difficult positions to play in any sport. And the leap from college to being even a serviceable quarterback in the NFL is a gap the size of the Atlantic Ocean. And more likely, a lot of them need a couple of years to season. But with that, let's give you a little quickie rundown. The Carolina Panthers traded up to number one to take Bryce Young. He's an undersized prospect who led the college footballing juggernaut that is Alabama. This dude, while a little bit small for the position, has all the intangibles. Cool as ice under pressure, oozes leadership, hyper accurate, but he goes to a Panther team that will most likely be shit. So I just hope he survives his first season. Houston, on the other hand, have a better chance with CJ Stroud, who is the more prototypical quarterback, six foot three, 215 pounds, can make the deep throws down the sideline that everybody oohs and ahs over. He also has a bit of clutch gene in him. He saved his best play for the biggest bowl games. And I just have more confidence in Houston because I like their head coach, D'Amico Ryans. And Lukaku, but he added 35 pounds, or like two stone. I don't even know what a stone is, I'm just guessing. But then he could run nearly as fast as Marcus Rashford. That is the type of physical specimen this dude is. Unfortunately, he's about as accurate as Lukaku as well, as he struggles to consistently hit his receivers in stride, which is pretty important when it comes to playing quarterback. Yeah, shocker. That, and he's also part of a Colts organization that has a drunk foreign owner. I'm not lying about that. <laughs> you got a DUI, look it up. But Jim Irsay is the biggest ass hat when it comes to owners. Because despite having the money to pay their star running back, Jonathan Taylor, he went on Twitter and said, quote, If I die tonight and Jonathan Taylor is out of the league, no one would miss him. Hey, genius, you say this shit about your own players, who the fuck is going to want to play with you? I don't know. Maybe he was back on the sauce when he wrote this shit. But anyway, the Colts and most likely Anthony Richards are fucked. Now, before we get into the front runners, let's talk about a few sleeper teams. None of these teams are stone cold locks, but these are the teams that I feel if the cards break right, we could see the move into the upper echelon of the NFL. First up is New York. And when I say New York, I mean both New Yorks. Yeah, the Jets and the Giants could both be good this year. And to be fair, at times last season, they both looked good, but uh, only the G-Men made the playoffs. So let's talk about them first. Brian Dable might be the best of this new generation of head coaches in the NFL. The dude can coach his dick off. And reviving a franchise has laid dormant since the days of Eli Manning. Let's just say it was a mighty, impressive debut season for the man who looks like White Buddha. An offense led by the always electric Saquon Barkley and a sneaky good D. If their quarterback, Danny Dimes, can keep their turnovers down, New York should make the playoffs again this year. And as for the Jets, we already mentioned Mr. Aaron Rodgers, but I like their head coach, Robert Salah. Their defensive line is a bunch of bullies, and they featured the defensive rookie of the year last year in Sauce Gardner. It's pretty much going to go the way Aaron Rodgers go. If he's still got gas left in his tank, not only will they make the playoffs, they could be a true contender for once. But in the same division, we got the New England Patriots. Not long ago, they were the only lock to make the playoffs year in and year out. It seemed that way for two decades. But the greatest dynasty of the modern era haven't been the same since Brady left town. Tommy Six Rings bounced and won a chip in Tampa. While New England have failed to make the playoffs, two of the last three seasons since he left, which has taken a bit of shine off the GOAT status that head coach Bill Belichick has enjoyed for the latter part of two decades. So the hoodie is looking to be back in his bag this season. And he's doing it by getting back to the roots, what has always been his team's great defense. And this roster is reloaded and set to be all world on that side again this year. All he needs is the offense to be somewhat competent and Boston could be coming back to take the throne. But it's gonna be tough because the AFC is stacked this year and he doesn't even have to look that far because the division has a couple of young usurpers hungry to make a name for themselves more on them later and the next team i kind of like this year is seattle and last year with the departure of the longtime sophomore russell wilson i expected him to go full rebuild what no one foresaw was the rebuild was going to be instant they had yet another rookie masterclass. Tariq woodland made the pro bowl as a rookie cornerback, a position notorious for taking years to master. Their other rookie, Kenneth Walker, looked like one of the most explosive running backs in the league last year. And then they go revive the dead and rotting carcass of Geno Smith, a bust for the New York Jets. He comes back, has a Pro Bowl season, and drops this bar. The folks you said had written you off, maybe? What did they say to them? Yeah, they wrote me off. I ain't right back, though. And then this year in the draft, they go and grab... Zach Charbonnet, to have just an insane two-headed beast at running back. They get the best rookie wide receiver in this class at Njigba to add with the human growth hormone that is DK Metcalf, and then the wily old coach, P. 
Pete Carroll. All he does is win tight football games and just absolutely pulverize a piece of gum every Sunday. As a Niner fan, I am terrified of what the Seahawks could be this year. So I'm moving on to Miami, who might have the most entertaining coach in the NFL. This dude looks like a crypto bro and is the first of the internet slash meme generation to get a head coaching gig. And it shows in interviews like this. Something very quick to end on, kill, kiss, or marry your coaching tree. Kyle Shanahan, Matt LaFleur, Sean McVay. Uh, start with Matt, I'd kiss him because he's uh, most endearing. I would marry um, Kyle because I've spent the most time with him, so I should marry him, and I would kill Sean. But he's also a mad genius when it comes to offense, and it's resulted in one of the most explosive offenses in the league. Featuring two of the fastest human beings on the planet in Jalen Waddell and Tyreek Hill, they essentially have two Mbappes at wide receiver. As long as they can keep their quarterback, Tua, from being concussed four times a year, they can be as dangerous as anyone on that side of the field. Their problem last year, beyond Tua throwing up Naruto hand seals, was their defense. But that'll get solved because they just brought in Vic Fangio as their new defensive coordinator. And this man is pretty much a lock to turn around any defense. But with that, let's give you the front runners. These are the top five teams heading into the season, rated by Las Vegas. At the start of the season, the fifth best odds winning the Super Bowl this year goes to the Cincinnati Bengals. They had a Super Bowl appearance two years ago, and if the refs didn't have a say, they probably would have gotten back last year. They have one of the baddest mans walking in the league right now in Joey Burrow. And he's got former Rookie of the Year, Jamar Chase, to throw to, and is always a threat to take it the distance. Combine that with T. Higgins, and you might have the best wide receiver tandem in the league. So why are they fifth on the list? Well, they still can't protect Joe Burr. Their O-line has the rigidity of a paper towel, and that shit line let Burrow's knee get folded in two a couple seasons ago. In fact, he's consistently one of the most sacked QBs in the league. But when he's upright, the offense is so fucking good that it almost makes up for it. Then coming in with the fourth best odds are the San Francisco 49ers. And they were pretty good in 2022. Just check out these stats. They had the number one ranked defense, they had the number five ranked offense, and they had the number one ranked special teams unit. They were pretty much top five in every category you can care about. They've made the NFC Championship game three out of the last four years. And last year, they finished the season on a five game winning streak, all the while losing two starting quarterbacks due to injuries. Now, they also lucked out that the third string guy actually turned out to be better than the other two guys ahead of him. Brock Purdy, aka Big Cock Brock, was Mr. Irrelevant in last year's draft, a nickname given in infamy for being the last player taken in the draft. And 99.9% of the time, that player never makes it in the league. But this dude with the laid back demeanor got the team rolling in ways Jimmy GQ and Trey Lance never could. And for the first time since Kyle Shanahan got to San Francisco, he is a QB that he actually trusts. And if he didn't tear his elbow in the NFC Championship game, God knows how far this team could have gone. They're so all in on Brock Purdy that they traded away Trey Lance, a guy they took third overall in the draft three years ago and traded away a bajillion first round picks for. And what did they get back? A measly fourth round pick. And I kind of understand it because it's all in now. Their window is closing. Many of their key pieces are near the end of their careers. And with such a high level of success over the last four seasons, regression seems almost inevitable. The only thing that can truly prolong their window is if Big Hawk Brock can make the next leap to superstardom. And it would be a great story. The man who made Mr. Irrelevant irrelevant. Can he do it? He's got the weapons around him. The defense should at least be a top 10 unit again. So it's all on Brock to see if his cock is indeed that big. Coming in at number three are the Buffalo Bills. And Bills Mafia rise up and then through a flaming table. Josh Allen maybe didn't hit the same heights last season as he did the year prior, but that reportedly was due to a minor injury. They still boast one of the best rosters in the NFL, although they had a couple of major stars go down near the end of the season. Losing their all-world defensive back, Davius White, to an ACL tear was pretty devastating, and only time will tell if he'll be fully back to 100% any time this season. Stefan Diggs just always seems to be making noise about wanting off of the team, but last time I checked, he's still there, and when he's on the field, he's one of the best pass catchers on the planet. Then in this past year's draft, they added Dalton Kincaid, one of the best tight end prospects in recent memory. Will this finally be enough for Bill's Mafia to make a Super Bowl? Only time will tell. They're going to be good, don't get me wrong, but the two teams ahead of them, they just seem a level above. And coming in at number two, it's pretty chalk here. It's the Super Bowl runners-up. The Philadelphia Eagles. I don't think it's a question. They had the best roster in the NFL last year. Their quarterback, Jalen Hurts, is a testament that your college tape shouldn't define you. Every year, since high school, this man has improved. From being benched in the national championship game to going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the generational Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. It's hard not to root for this kid. But the identity of this team is built 
with their big uglies on both sides of the ball. Their O-line is the best in the league and ran the fuck over the 49ers' number one ranked defense in the playoffs last year. And their defensive line leads the league in sacks. They hit Brock Purdy so hard last year that they broke his elbow. They are a team that is as tough as their city. And by that, I mean they're just fucking mean. But with great talent comes great paychecks. In a league with an actual salary cap, you can't pay them all. Though they had a couple of big names walk in free agency this past offseason. And Philly typically is amazing at replacing talent through the draft. But it's not an exact science. So there's no guarantee that the guys coming in are going to be at the same level as they were last year. Still, they held on to most of their core. And if it wasn't for a blown call in the Super Bowl, it very well easily could have been Philadelphia raising the Lombardi Trophy last season. And then coming in at number one, they're the Man City of the League. It's the Kansas City Chiefs. And like Man City, they have the next generational talent at their most important position. Even you, wherever you are, have probably heard of Patrick Mahomes. This Kermit-sounding motherfucker does nothing but make highlight play after highlight play after highlight play. Even after losing his number one receiver last year to a random ass trade and having a bunch of nobodies at wide receiver to throw to, he still slung his way to a chip. Now, was he helped a little bit in the playoffs in the Super Bowl by the refs? Yes. I don't know what you want me to say. You got a lot of calls that went his way. But you're gonna need the refs on your side if you ever want a shot of catching Brady. And it's not like Tommy never got a couple calls thrown his way. Cough, cough, tuck rule. His main weapon, Travis Kelsey, had a career year last season, but He's getting up there. Their top defensive player, Chris Jones, is threatening to hold out till midway in the season. And this all still might not matter. With Dr. Robotnik calling plays and Patrick Mahomes healthy enough to chuck it, they'll be a contender to win the Super Bowl every year. And I mean, for God's sakes, they got so fucking bored last year, they actually played ring around the rosy in the middle of a professional football game. And listen, this is an easy chalk answer. But sometimes the chalk is right. Patrick Mahomes right now is just better than anybody else. It's like Messi in his prime. Whatever team he's on, I'm betting on them to bring home some silverware. And that's pretty much going to be my preview for the NFL season. Of course, there'll be surprises. Injuries play a huge role every season, and they take the souls of superstars every year. But with those injuries, you see new stars emerge, they break out, which adds to the fun and unpredictableness of the NFL. But that's for a future video. For now, grab your beer and your pizza, and every Sunday from now until 2024, you can look forward to seven hours of commercial free football. Thanks everybody for watching. If you did enjoy, take your hot erect impulse, smooching the like button right now. I'd like to thank all my patrons, keep me alive and well. And yeah, that's gonna be it for me. Till next time, boys. America.